previously on Deathmark. You gonna die, fat ass? Just kidding. I mean, you might actually die, but... Well, we didn't see a face, so the plus. As I leave the booth, Suzu comes up to me. You don't look good. Did something happen in there? Yeah. Talked to a woman. She screamed at me and hung up. But that happens a lot. Tell Suzu about my conversation with Hanayomi. I wonder what's going on. She answered my question, okay? Suzu's brow froze in confusion. Do you want to see about that other telephone box? Maybe some clues are there. Or you can try one more time there. No time to get lost in thought. The last phone booth is at the T Mountain Rest Area in the other direction. We'll head there after stopping at the mansion. It's probably wise to ask Mary what she knows since it's on the way. The second phone box. Oh, I thought I was gonna like look around. Never mind, I guess yes. Talk. I tell Mary what happened at the phone box. You say Hanayoma acted strangely? She called the spirit that cursed you with your Mark Buddha. I cannot say I know what she saw. From what you said, she will likely not respond to your question. That does not mean she does not understand you, however. Use any method available to obtain as much information as you can. That's helpful. We go to Ida now. What was that? Uh, it sounds like he don't really want to go. All right, time for the rest area. The phone booth stands solitary on the edge of the vacant rest area. An endless sea of trees stand behind it. Christine must have run into the forest that assured the phone ring. You can hear a dog howl from nearby. It's not a howl, that's that's a bark. Oh, well, the bark bark. It almost sounds sad, but I'm probably just imagining- It sounds angry, okay? Doesn't seem to be bother Ida. He's only paying attention to the phone box. It's gotta be the booth the rumors mention. Something about it just feels off. Like everything is telling me this is it. Well, now that I'm here, I still have no idea why Hanayomi hung up on me. I followed the rumors exactly. Where'd I go wrong? I scratch my head. And hair falls out. <laughs> Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Suddenly I hear that strange voice again. Gossip. In other words, the rumors. What will happen if I don't follow the rumors? Ada, go back to the car. There's something I want to try. It might end up backfiring on me. Oh, okay. There wasn't a live or die scenario back at that one, so... But I couldn't say yes. It was either no... Was it I haven't seen it or I don't know. Make sure you come back. I can't drive, so... Oh, right. Wait a sec. Ada puffs out his chest and holds his index finger up. I've got some good info from the BBS. I guess Hanayama has this weird fixation on eyes. If something goes wrong, just remember that. What the hell is- she gonna pop my eyes out? Uh, I'm not really sure either. Anyway, just avoid saying I and things like that. Don't talk about myself? No? I mean E-Y-E as an eyeball. Oh, and just in case, don't mention words that have the sound either. God. Now it's getting complicated. There's a limit to unreliability. I'll keep it in mind. God, I'm gonna write this shit down. Don't say I. <laughs> I'm gonna forget, just like in the last one. Ada returns to the car. I swear to god, she shows up. Step inside and wait for the phone to ring. There's a poster in this booth too. Just like the one at the park, this looks like it's been here for a few years. Help our investigation. 
on the night of 2899X. An assault took place in the forest nearby. If anyone has any info on this case, please notify H Police Department. Was she assaulted and killed? February 8th, five years ago. The poster saw in the park at the exact same date. Coincidence? Not likely! The phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. I hear a noise like someone chewing gum from the other end of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. Wait! In our last answer, we said... I have not seen it. We said I. Nope. Wait. Told me not to say anything that sounds with I. That's going the opposite way. So confused. You saw, didn't you? No, I take it back. Saw that thing of me. The voice cuts off. Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it. Oh, I can see it! Freaking handprint! Shit. Live or die. Tell me, how did you see it? So don't mention I. And don't say anything that sounds like I? With your own eyes or eyeglasses? A telescope? So nothing to do with eyes at all. What did you see it with? Telescope. Just gotta rip my eyes out. It sounds like something's searching around outside the phone box. Saw it. You said you saw it. What color? A beautiful color. Red, pink, green. I'm gonna say I in it. Red. Huh? That's I. Maybe pink. Okay, likely is saying I. saw it. What kind of person are you? What's important? Oh god, don't ask me another question. I'm so low on soul power. Your dreams, romance, love, which which do you choose? Got to be. Definitely my romance is great. Uh, romance is great. a random thing. Romance is great. The phone goes dead. The next I know, the bloody handprint is gone, and so is the ominous presence. Well, that took care of that. The questions she asked me were strange. She was particularly anxious about what I had seen. I think I did a good job not mentioning anything like eyes in my answer. Overly conscious of her being seen. I mean, that's where her secret lies. I exit the booth and Aidy rushes up to me. Did something happen? My mark hurt all of a sudden. I tell Aidy about what happened in the telephone booth. Man, it beats me. Guess there's no way he'd have the answer. Oh, hey. Something's on the ground there. Is it an eye? Oh. 
Sure enough, there's a folded up piece of paper lying near the booth. Looks like a piece of stationery. Romance is great. It was the safe word in the spectral BDSM game all along. <laughs> Where do you want this? The romance is great. I gotta go. <laughs> I don't think it was there before I went to the phone box. Pick up the paper and open it. Too psycho. <laughs> Too psycho? I'll dispel all of your heartache. So forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. An incident? The posters I saw on the telephone booth mentioned something like that too. Could they be connected? I ask Ada what they think. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think he's considering it seriously. Anyway, we visited all three boxes now. Wanna head back? I bet Susie's worried about us. Yeah. We should probably head back for now. The third phone box. Oh, welcome back. Christy is there in the garage. She's going through the files full of articles and criminal cases. How'd the investigation go? Uh, okay, I guess. Aiden and I tell Christy what we discovered. Hmm, I see. I can see Christy's mind working. Hey, Mr. Hojo. Even those posters in that bit of stationery you found? Could they be linked to Hanayome? She might have been someone who was caught up in the incident and killed. If that's the case, then... She glances over at the files. The dates were five years ago, right? And there might be an article on what happened here in these files. Let's get Suzu to help out too. Go get a move on. Aye aye, Capitan. All four of us begin reading through the files. The clippings range from the smallest dispute to the most heinous crime in each city. But they're all dated five years ago or earlier. Did they get stored in the garage because they're so old? Why were they here anyway? She's a... Spirit healer. You know what's rad but not rad enough at the same time? Tell me. Tell me, Wonk. Oh my god, it's a radish! After a while. Might have found it. That was cheesy. That was cheesy as shit. Five years ago in February, the victim's name is Seiko. He delays the file on the desk and we all peer at it. The file's articles about an incident that happened five years ago. The victim's name was Seiko Hezegawa. Apparently she committed suicide in the forest by each castle on the eve of her wedding. She was in her dress when she was found. Uh, Suzu, you probably shouldn't read anymore. It's pretty bad. Thanks, Ada. But I want to know more about Hanayome. I feel like I need to do this. She's cringing, but she sounds determined. Between this and sneaking out at night, she's a surprisingly brave kid. Rather odd for someone her age. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a news anchor. Same that I was just loud enough to hear. And do you know the whole story? It was horrible. It's hard to recount. A woman was abducted by a gang while she was walking her dog. They brought her to the forest and assaulted her. People found her battered and staggering along the road the next day. The dog was run over and killed near the forest when it chased after them. Aw, oh, why does the dog always have to die in these freaking Japanese games? Do you like it cheesy when you ask for pasta and they ask how you want it, you say cheesy. Yeah? So? That's horrifying. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of Seiko Hasegawa's misfortune. Beta somberly cuts in. His usual grin is nowhere to be found. It's well known in some circles, but her assault was photographed. The pictures were sent to her fiance. They threatened to make them public if he didn't pay up. I heard he gave them a ton of money to get the photos and the negatives. Is that true, Christy? Yeah, I heard that as well. 
Because of all that, Maseko had a mental breakdown. And in the end, she hung herself. She'd been a serious, honest woman, so she couldn't bear it. And that makes sense. The cruel fate of a woman attacked by her before her wedding. We fall silent as that reality weighs on us. Um... Susu timidly speaks up, her face pale. Maybe there's a connection between what happened to Miss Hasegawa and Hanayomi's phone boxes? According to the article, the incidents that wrecked her life took place near each phone box. She was abducted by the park and assaulted by the rest area. She was found wandering near the parking lot by a highway. Phone booths connect Hanayomi and Psycho Hasegawa. Coincidence sends a shiver down my spine. Why are they called two different things, though? If it's the spirit of Seiko, then why is it Hanayome? So then now we found by the telephone booth. Did Seiko's fiance write it? Most likely. What's strange is it was there, and not where she committed suicide. Did Hanayome put it there? Maybe she was telling us something. I have no clue how spirits think, but if Suzu's right, then that note is an important clue for us. I seem to recall Ms. Seiko's fiancé was a famous musician. As a result, the case was widely publicized at the moment of time. It happened right after they returned from a romantic trip to Greece. Old ladies were sobbing about how it made all the more tragic. And the poor dog they brought on the trip died heroically as well. Where's the fiancé now? Well, he began acting strange due to the shock and then went missing. Some say your suicide was to follow him. But, he wasn't the only one who disappeared. It sounds like all the culprits went missing too. You read the online too? Well, something like that. The internet wasn't the same back then. There were only hubs. Hubs? Like pre-internet chat rooms? That's right! Everyone was talking about it on the occult hubs back then. There was one person in the community who knew way too much. I think he was one of the culprits. He brought up a bunch of things, like taking pictures and all that. And I bet those were pictures of the assault. Yeah, that's right. After they were finished, those assholes got a camera out and took pictures of her, her face soaked with tears. There was a time before internet! The whole time she yelled, don't look, don't look. Don't look, huh? Naomi has an extreme reaction to being seen by others. He kept going on about it, night after night, until he suddenly stopped posting. People who knew him said they couldn't contact him at all. Those guys deserve to die, but it's still really creepy, you know? Suddenly, a line from the note pops into my head. I'll dispel all of your heartache. Beyonce killed them all! Hey, Christy. Do you happen to know exactly where in the forest Psycho killed herself? It was reported at the time, so I did go to the location. But that was five years ago, so I don't remember exactly. I feel like I went west from that big arch at the entrance. So you're really going to go? Yeah, we might be able to figure out something about Hanayomi. Okay. Though I'd much prefer to stay here. So we're not gonna take him then, I guess. Gathering up for the mansion. He wants to stay here, so... Let's take Christy, because she's been there. Why are we always following the same car? This is more awkward than I thought, being out alone with someone who, until recently, was planning to kill herself. Do you have something you want to say? Why aren't you dead yet? She noticed right away. Is that being that obvious? No, not really. It's fine, you don't have to hide it. You're wondering if I still want to kill myself, aren't you? Is this a woman's intuition? No, maybe I'm just crap at hiding things. Don't worry, I don't anymore. People hate it when things are forced on them, right? Doesn't matter what it is. I can trust you, right? Yes. 
At least for now. You're just hoping she keeps feeling the same, at least while we're together. Did we just run over a dog? Soon the tires hit a bump on the road. I can see a square gray object in the back seat to the rearview mirror. Huh? Is that thing back there yours? No. It's Ada's CD radio disc cassette player. Huh? Why something like that? He said we might need music during the drive, then went and put it in here himself. We don't have any CDs or tapes. Should I turn on the radio? No, I'll pass. Conversation grinds to a halt after that. It's like there's an invisible person between us. After falling silent a while, Chrissy finally speaks up again. It only makes sense for the conversation to turn one direction. It's rather worrisome, don't you think? After all this time, they don't know. Who doesn't know what? Those two. They think that spirit just helps you find things. What a naive fairy tale. Yeah. Christy is exactly right. You quickly become disillusioned once you actually face the spirit. But thinking about it, wouldn't that be best? Christy looks at me in shock. But the spirit does help you find things though, so... Wait, what are you saying? I just mean... Our lives are on the line here. Would you stop joking around? Sorry. She's furious at me. It looks like she was telling the truth about not wanting to die. She's got too much pride. Someone like that would never commit suicide. Even though she went to the forest to do it. What's so funny? Nothing. Will we make it back again? I stare at the headlights and contemplate where we're going. Where are we going? I forgot. Amnesia just kicks in. Sigh. Back at this shithole. This I was pretty deep. Can't believe we're here again. At least I can feel better knowing he's not around anymore. I almost remind her about Hanayome. I stopped myself from opening my mouth. I don't want to break her tenuous calm. Okay. It's supposed to be west of the gate. I look to the west of the gate again. There's no sign of a trail. Strange. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. When I came here researching an article, there's a path to the west. Suddenly, Chrissy's face stiffens. What's wrong? I... I feel cold all of a sudden. Oh, shit! Follow the gaze and see a low shadow dashing out from the darkness. A... dog? A dead dog? It almost seems like one. It kicks up the dirt with four legs. It looks... off somehow. The fur is long and disheveled, and from certain angles, its face looks human. No, that's... not really a human face. The dog stares at us, growling softly. Oh, what is it? Are you... trying to tell us something? You're being too gentle with it. You need to sound firm when you talk to a dog. Act like it's master. <laughs> Weaker dogs like to bark, right? So ignore it and stay quiet. So ignore it and stay quiet, huh? I guess that's true for humans too. Powerful people tend to ignore things. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Ignore it and stay quiet. Dog barks loudly, then vanishes into the western underbrush. The moment it's gone, the chill in the air dissipates like it was never there. Was it... Trying to guide us? Maybe. Or it wanted to freaking leave. I shine the flashlight on the spot where the dog disappeared. And now familiar pain shoots through my wrist. The mark's color grows more vivid. A few hours left until death closes in. There's probably not much time left. We better hurry. I'm glad if we're nocturnal people, like we sleep through the day and just wake up at night. Let's check the bushes over there. Investigating the forest again. Anything else I missed? Welcome to Lush Romantic Wood Timberland. 
I remember that. There's a thicket of trees next to the gate. With the dog gone, I pushed my way into the underbrush. I spot the trace of what used to be a path. You could barely call it one at this point. This must be the closed hiking trail. The path goes west from the gate. That's right, I remember now. This is the path I took before. The dog. Was it trying to show us this to us? Who knows? Anyway, let's get going. Let's not say we did. Gonna find anything? No. I heard rustling. Can't hide from my flashlight. Uh, let's go to the dead end. Let's not go to the dead end. Anyone over here? Something's in the grass. Can't see it well from here. Why you gotta, like, stick your hand somewhere? Feel around the blades of grass. Got instant camera. I've hit the switch before I realized, and the red light appears. Apparently that means that the flash can be used. I must still have battery left. Not that we're going to take any pictures with it. This is like, uh... This is gonna be like... Fatal frame. We gotta take pictures of the ghosts. You're right. Turn it off and quickly stuff it in my bag. I decided it's wise not to mention the dried blood that stuck to the bottom of it. Oh! To see is to perceive light. That distant voice echoes in my head. True. Seeing something means you're seeing the light it's reflecting. What does that have to do with Hanayome? I shine a light on the grove of trees in front of us and catch a glimpse of something odd. Huh? What is that? Something's posted there? I can't make it out from here. I gotta move closer. What is this? All thought in my mind ceases. It's as if I'm unable to process what I'm seeing and my brain comes to a halt. Are these photos? There are a bunch of pictures of different people posted to the tree. But they're all... All these photos. Have nails in the eyes? It's just as Christy said. For some bizarre reason, each photo has a person with nails driven through both eyes. Touched on nails and some kind of tape. Cold sweat drips down my back. What kind of grudge would cause someone to do something like this? Hey, all the people in these pictures. Let me guess, they went missing? Are they all men? Oh. No, they look like women too. They definitely look like women. But these mothers are just loud enough to hear. Huh? I'll look over the photos again. A good number of them are deteriorated, so they're hard to make out, but they may be right. Yeah, looks like it. No, 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 no. Two of them I see are females. All the subjects are men. You lie! Clearly not a coincidence. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and hit the sub for more walkthroughs, playthroughs, and let's plays on the gaming experience.